guys, welcome back to our channel. On this channel we talk a lot about prayer, different ways of praying, fun ways to pray and creative prayer ideas that you can try. We've got loads of videos all about those ideas which we'll link down in the description below. But today both Arnold and Bernard are back with us because we're going to be looking at one specific prayer idea that comes from the Bible. And this prayer idea is praying the Ten Commandments. So this is a prayer idea that I learned from someone at my last church who had learnt it from someone else at her old church. So I don't actually know who first came up with it, but it's a really great way of praying through the Ten Commandments, praying for lots of different things. And it also really helps you to learn the Ten Commandments. So for this video, we're going to go through the Ten Commandments, showing you the actions that help us to focus on each of the commandments, and thinking of some different things that we can pray for under each commandment. And then later, we're going to suggest some different ways that you could use this prayer idea. But first, let's have a look in the Bible and read the passage where we find the Ten Commandments to remind us of what they are and where in the Bible this comes from. So we can read the Ten Commandments in Exodus chapter 20, verses 3 to 17. It says, You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above, or on the earth beneath, or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them, or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labour and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you, nor your son or daughter, nor your male or female servant, nor your animals, nor any foreigner residing in your towns. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, but he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honour your father and your mother, so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbour. You shall not covet your neighbour's house. You shall not covet your neighbour's wife, or his male or female servant, his ox or donkey, or anything else that belongs to your neighbour. So the idea of these prayers is to use each of the Ten Commandments as a launching point for your prayers. So the first commandment is that you shall have no other gods before me. And the action for this is simply taking one finger, as this is the first commandment, and holding it like this, to represent the fact that we have just one God. So we can begin here with prayers of praises, prayers of thanksgiving to God, showing that God is the only one who deserves our praise and our thanks. He is the only God we worship. The second commandment is that you shall not make any idols. So the action for this is to take two fingers, representing that it's a second commandment, and show them bowing towards each other. So here we can think about the things that we often turn into idols, whether that is money or fame, or what other people think about us, our career maybe. And we can pray that we don't become too focused on those things, that we don't start worshipping them, or putting all of our attention and focus on those things. We can pray that we remain focused on God, and value him above all of these other things that we mentioned. The third commandment is that we shall not blaspheme, that we shall not misuse the name of the Lord. The action for this is to take three fingers, as this is the third commandment, and hold them to our mouth, representing speech. So here we can think about the different things that we call God, the different names that he has. Lord, Father, King, Friend. We can think about those names and pray around those names, thanking God for all the wonderful things that he's done and for who he is. And we can also pray for our speech, for the words we say, that we will be kind in what we say and wise and think before we speak. We can pray that our words will encourage other people rather than tearing them down. The fourth commandment is to remember the Sabbath day. So the action for this is to take two fingers on each hand and place them together like this. 
So here, we can pray that God will help us to be obedient in keeping the Sabbath day. And we can also pray that we will find and take this time to rest. Maybe we need to think about the things that stop us taking time to rest, that stop us keeping the Sabbath day, and pray that we'll be able to overcome those obstacles and find times to rest. The fifth commandment is to honour your father and mother. So the action for this is to take three fingers on one hand and two fingers on another and act as if the three fingers are bowing towards the two, representing the parents. Here we can pray for our parents and people who have taken on that parental role in our lives, people that have cared for us and looked after us. We can pray for families all over the world, for this relationship between parents and children, for healing where that relationship has broken down. We can pray that parents will be able to teach their children right from wrong and be able to pass down their faith through the generations. The sixth commandment is you shall not murder and the action for this is to hold five fingers up and then your thumb as the sixth finger and make this action. And here we can pray for the situations and the places both around the world and more locally where people are losing their lives, whether that's due to knife crime or abortion, gang violence, terrorism or if they live in a war zone. We can pray for peace and an end to this violence. We can pray for those people who have committed murder, that they will repent and turn away from those ways, that they will come to know Christ. We can pray for those who have lost loved ones to violence and murder, that God will bring them comfort and healing. The seventh commandment is you shall not commit adultery. So the action for this is to take two fingers, representing the two people of a relationship take the five fingers of your other hand and cut down the middle. Here we can pray for relationships and marriages, that they will be strong and united. We can pray for healing where adultery has taken place, that God will bring comfort and restore those marriages. If there are relationships that we know personally are struggling, we can pray specifically for those people and pray about how we can help them. The eighth commandment is that you shall not steal. The action for this is to take four fingers on each hand, showing the eighth commandment, and pulling them as if you are pulling something towards yourself. And here, I think there are two groups of people that we need to be praying for. Those who are doing the stealing and those who are being stolen from. For those who are stealing, we can pray that they will stop stealing, that they will turn away from these acts. For those who feel that stealing is their only way to survive, Pray that God will provide for them in different ways. Bring them people who can help them and love them and help to provide for them. And for those who are being stolen from, we can pray for protection over those businesses and those houses, that the people will feel safe. The ninth commandment is that you shall not give false testimony. So for this action, we take four fingers on one hand and lay it down as if we're laying it on a Bible, just wear an oath. And we take the five fingers of the other hand and raise it. So here we can pray personally that we will be people of honesty and integrity in what we say and what we do. We can also pray this for other people, people in prominent positions of power, people like politicians and the media, world leaders, teachers, church leaders. And we can also pray more widely for the justice system, that all those who are part of the criminal justice system will receive fair treatment and a fair trial. And those who are innocent will be found innocent, and those who are guilty will be found guilty. And the final commandment is you shall not covet. So for this action, we use all ten fingers and make fists, pulling things towards each other as if we are taking something. So here we can pray that we will feel content with what we have, that we won't be jealous or envious of what other people have that we don't, but that God will make us grateful for what we already have. We can pray that everyone around the world will have the things that they need to survive. So, now that we've been through each of the Ten Commandments and looked at the different things that we could pray about for each of them, how can we actually use this prayer idea? So the first way that we could use this prayer idea is in our own personal prayers. When you're praying by yourself, why not go through this list of commandments in your mind, using the actions to help you remember the different commandments? and pray about whatever comes to mind around each of those commandments. You 
can pray about the situations that you know personally that may fit into those different categories and you can pray for the wider world in general. The second way we could use this prayer idea is to use it as we lead intercessions. I've got a whole video about leading prayers at church that I'll link down below that is full of different creative ways to lead intercessions at church but this is another great way of doing that. Go through the Ten Commandments introducing the different actions to help people focus on each topic as you go through. Then pray around some of the ideas that we've thought about. You may want to just focus on one thing per commandment, but this can be a great way to structure your prayers. And the third way to use this prayer idea would be in a small group, such as a house group or a youth group. Go through these commandments again, but this time get different people to contribute their ideas to what you could be praying about. These could be situations that they know personally, prayers that they want to pray for themselves, but it's a great way to get different people's input and different people's ideas and then to pray over them together. So those are some fun ways that you can pray the Ten Commandments using this really well-known and wonderful Bible passage to guide your prayers. If you've enjoyed this video please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe down below to see more videos from me, Arnold and Bernard as this really helps to support us. We create videos every Saturday about prayer, about exploring the Bible and about living out your faith. So if you have any questions about any of those topics or things that you particularly want us to make a video about in the future, do let us know down in the comments below. And we will see you next week for a new video. Bye!